Hi everyone, today we talk about elements of physical geography. Our learning objectives are define geography and physical geography and describe spatial analysis, summarize scientific process and discuss human population growth and it is related to geography science, describe open and closed systems, feedback and equilibrium concepts as they relate to earth system and describe three geographic tools, global position system, GIS, and also explain these tools, how they relate in geographic analysis. What is geography and why we study geography? So geography main focus is to study how Earth's phenomena are distributed and understand their interrelationships. Geography also a spatial science that answers questions about why phenomena patterns vary across the Earth's surface. Geographers study patterns of climate and how they relate to vegetation, topography and soils, and the complexity of the planetary surface and what lies above and below it, the spatial patterns and the interrelations between those things and human activities. But what do you mean spatial? Well, it's not like that. So, the term spatial refers to a nature character of physical space and the distribution of things within. To better understand the definition, we need to discuss the five themes of geography. Location, place, region, movement, and finally, human-environment interaction. Location is defined as the position in space, or something the best way to locate something is by using latitude and longitude. For example, I was born in the city of Pelotas in South Brazil. The city is located at a latitude of 31 degrees south and 52 degrees west. Region is another geography theme. A geography would want to know how the southern region compares with other regions of Brazil. In order these questions be answered, a physical geography will collect data to compare temperatures, precipitation, vegetation, soil, and the next theme is place. It's defined with everything in what is unique in this area, such as culture, language, and people. Imagine your school as a place. Then the area will include the buildings, walls, windows, classroom, people, and everything else in the school, including the language spoken. Movement is another geography team. Well, since the beginning of the humanity, people have always been moving, look for a better place to live, food, a better climate, and so on. They walk first in horses, boats, cars, and fine airplanes. These maps show the immigration routes in 1858, so you can see where people have been moving at that time, and now more, as you can expect. Our next topic is what it is scientific method. The scientific method is a process for experimentation that's used to explore observations and answer questions. Does this mean all scientists follow exactly this process? No. Some areas of science can be more easily tested than others. For example, scientists studying how stars change as they age or how di dinosaurs digest their food cannot fast forward as a star life by a million years or run magical exams on feeding dinosaurs to test their hypothesis. When direct experimentation is not possible, scientists modify the scientific method. In fact, there is a probability as many versions of the scientific method as there are scientists. But even when modified, the goal remains the same to discover cause and effect relationships by asking questions, careful gathering and examining the evidence and seeing if all the available information can be combined in a logical answer. Even though we show the scientific method as a series of steps, keep in mind that new information or thinking might cause a scientist to back up and repeat steps at any point during the process. A process like the scientific method that involves such backup up and repeating is called the interactive process. 
What are you doing a science fair project, a classroom science activity, independent research, or any other hands-on scientific inquiry? Understand the steps of the scientific method will help you focus your scientific questions and work through your observations and data to answer the questions as well as possible. So the scientific methods, when you ask a question about something that you observe, how, what, when, who, which, why, or where. Do background research, rather than start from scratch and putting together a plan for answering your question. You want to be a savvy scientist using library and internet research to help you find the best way to do things and ensure that you don't repeat mistakes from the past. Construct a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess about things works. What is an example? Attempt to answer your questions with explanation that can be tested. A good hypothesis allows you to make a prediction. State both your hypothesis and the resulting prediction you'll be testing. Predictions can be easy to measure. So test your hypothesis by doing an experiment. Experiment tests whether your prediction is accurate and thus your hypothesis support or not. It's important for your experiment to be a fair test. You conduct a fair test by making sure that you change only one factor at a time while keeping all other conditions the same. Analyze your data and draw a conclusion. Once your experiment is complete, you collect your measurements and analyze them to see if they support your hypothesis or not. And finally, communicate your results. Test your hypothesis by doing an experiment. Experiment tests whether your prediction is accurate and thus your hypothesis support or not. It's important for your experiment to be a fair test. You conduct a fair test by making sure that you change only one factor at a time while keeping all other conditions the same. Analyze your data and draw a conclusion. Once your experiment is complete, you collect your measurements and analyze them to see if they support your hypothesis or not. And finally, communicate your results. To complete your science fair project, you communicate your results to others in a final report and or display board. Professional scientists do almost exactly the same thing by publishing their final report in a scientific journal or by presenting their results on a poster or doing a talk at a scientific meeting.